to North Carolina, Republican vice presidential nominee Mike Pence. Uh, Governor Pence, thanks for joining us. You heard Robbie Mook there, campaign yeah, manager for Hillary, saying, hey, there was cherry-picked data that, that the AP used. I don't know. Do you agree with that? Disagree? Push back? Uh, it really is extraordinary, Eric, that, uh, that uh, this, this cascade of controversies and new emails coming out each and every day are continuing to give further and further evidence of a direct connection between foreign contributors and corporate contributors to the Clinton Foundation and access and special favors granted by the State Department. I mean, they, Donald Trump and I have made it clear uh, that this evidence cries out for action. Uh, the Clintons should immediately shut down the Clinton Foundation, not just if she gets elected president. And, frankly, the Obama administration uh, should initiate an independent special prosecutor immediately to get to the bottom of what's been going on. I mean, this is really remarkable. Now, the Clintons have actually admitted that there would be a conflict of interest if she became president of the United States to them accepting foreign contributions to the Clinton Foundation. But apparently, Eric, there was no conflict of interest when Hillary Clinton was the Secretary of State of the United States involved in and directing all of America's diplomatic efforts. It just, it makes no sense. Uh, no one is above the law. The American people have a right uh, to know the answers and to know what was going on here. And Donald Trump and I are calling for immediate action by the administration to uh, to create an independent special prosecutor, and uh, and that would be the right thing for them to do. Governor, why do you think the, there's not much of an appetite by the Obama administration and his Department of Justice to, in fact, appoint a special prosecutor? Well, we we just seen a, a course of conduct here. It was it was a couple of weeks ago that that the latest tranche of emails came out that for the first time seemed to establish a direct connection between foreign contributors to the Clinton Foundation and access and favors by the State Department. And a day later, you remember, Eric, we found out that the FBI had actually wanted to initiate a public corruption investigation into the Clinton Foundation, but was shut down by other officials in the Justice Department or in the administration. That's exactly what the, what the special prosecutor statute is for. If the FBI is unable to take action on this, then that's what, that's what you appoint an independent special prosecutor for. That's what Donald Trump and I are calling on, and I think, I think millions of Americans would support that call, and, uh, and we'll see if the president's willing to take the action. Yeah, you know, President Obama, early on when he um, appointed or asked Hillary Clinton to join his State Department, said, we want you to keep the Clinton Foundation business separate from the State Department business. Doesn't seem like they did that very well, did they? Well, it's, you know, the, this, this so-called, you know, separation or the wall between the State Department and, uh, and the Clinton Foundation appears to be crumbling before our eyes. And, and frankly, Hillary Clinton's making light of it. It really is remarkable. The toughest interview she's done in a while was with Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, and she joked that her emails were boring. But, Eric, this is no laughing matter. This is the kind of pay-to-play politics that the American people are tired of and they deserve to know before early voting begins in just a matter of weeks what the truth of all of this is. And it's time for Hillary Clinton to come clean. It's time for the Clintons to shut down the Clinton Foundation. But more important than that, it's time for this administration to appoint an independent special prosecutor to look into sure. what is increasingly obvious conflict of interest yeah. that existed Con conflict between of interest, the Clinton conflict Foundation Conflict of State interest is, is the nice way of saying possibly pay to play, possibly illegal activity. I'll tell you, in the corporate world, if you were doing this as a board member, ingratiating, lining your own pocket on the basis of your work with the corporation, you'd get thrown out, maybe thrown in jail. Sir, I'd like to turn to the next but topic. There was, that, there was that other piece, too, Eric. There was that other piece, too, that we just found out. The AP, I mean, hat tip to the Associated Press for finding out that, that more than half of the private meetings that Secretary of State Clinton held during her tenure as America's top diplomat were with individuals uh, who had contributed an interest that had contributed more than 150 million dollars to the Clinton Foundation. I mean, th that is just breathtaking because you have to remember, your viewers need to remember, you know, the foreigners cannot contribute to a, the American political process. And so the idea that, that these the foreign contributions to the Clinton Foundation gained access yeah. to the very office of the Secretary of State uh, is, is I, frank, I think, 
frankly, it's just shocking yeah. Governor, the American I, people I, deserve I've, to know what was going I've on. I've been looking into the Clinton Foundation for a long time, and I'm telling you, this hook on this company called Teneo Holdings, you're going you're to hear a lot more about Teneo Holdings going forward, but, boy, this is that wall you're talking about. They brought that wall right down. Teneo bridged the gap between those two worlds, and it looks to me very, very fishy, shady, shadowy. Sir, I want to move on to the next topic. Um, your campaign, uh, Donald Trump has been on the campaign trail courting the African-American vote and the Hispanic vote. Let's take a listen. To the African-American voter, great people, to the Hispanic voter who have been absolutely treated terribly, I say, what do you have to lose? What? I will fix it. I'll be able to make sure that when you walk down the street in your inner city or wherever you are, you're not going to be shot. Your child isn't going to be shot. Okay, Governor, you're, yeah, what, are you, what are you going for? What number are you looking for? I think you're polling somewhere around 8% of the black vote, somewhere around 20, 22% Hispanic vote. What number do you need? Look, Donald Trump has made it clear that he wants to be president for all the people of the United States of America. His vision to make America great again, to make America safe again, to make America work again, is a vision for every American in every community in the city and on the farm. And I got to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud to be standing shoulder to shoulder with this man who understands the Republican Party is the party of Lincoln. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, you know, led America through that great trial of the Civil War and ended slavery once and for all. It was, it was Abraham Lincoln who, who championed the end of the abomination of slavery. And, and, and our party, I, I believe, I, I believe our party has to continue, as, as my hero Jack Kemp used to say, continue to reach out with that opportunity vision to every American. I mean, I mean go, go whether it's African Americans or Hispanic Americans, everybody wants safe streets, they want good schools, sure. they want more jobs, and Donald Trump and I are going to fight to bring that to every community. There, there was a marked pivot, maybe about a week and a half, two weeks ago, where he did. He turned it, the focus to African Americans and Hispanics, maybe with a, this somewhat of a softening position on immigration. Um, where did that come from? Who generated that pivot? Well, I, I can tell you, the, the person running Donald Trump's campaign, the person writing Donald Trump's speeches is Donald Trump. I mean, what, what you get from Donald Trump, and what I just saw it here in North Carolina today again, Eric, is, is he, he's, he has made a connection with the American people like no one in my lifetime since Ronald Reagan. And it's because, quite a contrast with Hillary Clinton, he's a truth teller who speaks straight from his mind, straight from his heart. Uh, and and so I, I you know I know I know many of the pundits and the political class want to want to see some sort of uh, strategy that's at work. What I can tell you is Donald Trump is speaking his mind straight to the American people. They hear him loud and clear. And I truly do believe the momentum in this campaign is extraordinary, uh, and it's going to carry us all the way to victory in November. Now we're going to leave it there, Governor. Before we let you go, I just want to point out to our audience: you're at the Manufacturing Methods in North Carolina. Tool and die company, a flourishing tool and die that started as a small business that expanded, and that's the reason you're there. And thank you very much for spending some time with us tonight. All right, Eric, next. Eric, this is a great success story. Started with a guy with two employees, and we couldn't be more proud to be here. Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much.